Yo guys, have you ever seen one of those fancy OBD2 scanners online before super cheap? I mean, there's some that cost like $500, $800, or even well over $1,000. And it costs you an annual subscription. But this one right here is only $199 and it says free updates for life. Sounds too good to be true, right? But what I'm really wondering is, can it survive a drop? Oh, can it survive two drops? Or how about three? It wasn't even recording, so here's drop number four. And number five. And this is number six. Let's see if it still works. So far, just some scuffing. I guess it really helps that there's some uh, thick padding on the edges. All of the buttons seem to work. Auto scan, special functions, diagnosis. Well, let's see if this auto scan feature can tell if this is a Honda Prelude. Oh, shoot. <laughs> we got auto scan. Let's go. Eight seconds later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What? Fail to read state. Let's try it again. 68 seconds later. I'm about to go take a restroom break. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. It's picking it up on the second try. It looks like there's a lot of pins, so we're gonna put 16 pin connector. We're in America, the US of A. I guess second try is the charm. So we could do automatic scans, but let's see vehicle information. What does it say? It says, you know what? It's not even the tool's fault. My car has a Acura RSX computer in it. So let's try a different car with its original computer inside of it. <laughs> we got a Honda Civic over there. Let's get to it. Here's some loose stuff in here. So car number two, we're gonna see this auto scan works and we're gonna test it. Oh, 16 pin, USA. Oh, that was fast. Oh shoot. Wow, we're already here at vehicle information. So let's see if this knows that this is a 2007 Honda Civic four-door sedan. 2007 Honda Civic. And yeah, sure, that's my VIN number. Okay, so I dropped this at least 10 times now, and it seems to work perfectly fine. So let's drop it another 90 times. When you're using a scanner, you'll typically need to plug it into the car with a wired connection. And sometimes you might forget that the tool is on your lap, causing you to drop your precious, fancy, affordable scan tool. So in this first test, I'm gonna be dropping the scanner 30 times from my lap while getting in and out of my car. Whoops. <laughs> Get that little stomp. Maybe you're thinking that my car is a little too low and that's not really the average drop height. So let's say we're sitting in a chair, right? And you forget you got it on your lap and you just get up. In the second test, I'm dropping the scanner another 30 times, but from an even higher height, which should be about the average seating position if you're sitting in a regular chair or at a desk. And for the third test, maybe you're at the table and you're working on something and, whoops. Oh shoot, where did that go? <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but dropping it from table height one or two times is pretty nerve wracking. I'd be surprised if this scanner even turns on anymore. Okay, so that was three tests, 30 drops each on top of the 10 drops I did earlier. So 100 drops and it still turns on. Boom, still functional, still pretty responsive. Let's see if the auto scan feature still works and if it'll detect that the Honda Civic is the Honda Civic. <laughs> there we go, second time, seems to work every time. Boom, 16 pin, USA. Let's do a vehicle information. There we go, Civic 2007. The scanner is in decent condition considering that it was dropped a hundred times at various heights. There's some scuff marks on the rubber padding. The warranty sticker is a little peeled at the corner and there are only a few scratch marks on the screen. I'm interested to see what broke inside. So let's dive into it. To open up the scanner, there are four Allen screws on the back. 
Once I had loosened them all up, I was able to flip it over to dump out the screws. The warranty sticker needed to be cut so I could pry open the case. And it was actually a little challenging to get it open. The rubber piece on the right hand side had a wire going to the main board. And I'm assuming that's the Wi-Fi antenna. After prying along the top side of the casing, the entire thing just seemed to open right up pretty easily. And now, here's a first look at the internals of the OBD2 scanner. I found some broken pieces of plastic which seemed to be what was causing all of that noise after the first 10 drops. It looks like the plastic pieces came from the handheld part on the right hand side. To remove what I think is the Wi-Fi antenna, just pry up on this little plug and I was able to remove the rubber piece. Holding down the main board are five screws, but I should probably disconnect the battery connector first before moving forward because I might risk blowing something up or maybe causing a short that could ruin the whole scanner. And it'll probably be helpful to unplug this connector on the left hand side, which will allow me to remove the main board. Now that the main board is free, to be honest, I have no idea what I'm looking at, but it's always interesting to see the internals of electronics and how microscopic technology can be. Pretty cool. Underneath the main board is a metal plate, but it seems to be some sort of cooling plate that is probably meant to prevent heat from reaching the screen or the main board. And lastly, the battery can be removed, but it doesn't seem like I can get to the screen. The screen looks like it's integrated into the plastic and I'd have to break it open or something just to get there. So that's pretty much as far as I can go. And now I just gotta put it all back together. Now, I'm pretty surprised that this survived 100 drops. After the first 10, I was like, is this still okay? And then after dropping it 30 times from the car, 30 times from sitting down, and 30 times from a table, I really had low expectations for this uh, durability-wise. But surprisingly, it still seems to work. I took it apart, reassembled it, and it still powers on and works normally. It's pretty cool that it's got the auto scan feature. You got a nice, decent sized display and it's pretty fast. It's not that very slow when you're navigating through the different pages. It can give you live data, which is very useful. Did you see the RPMs are up back there? Right, right. And then on the computer, 1800 and it's moving around a lot. As far as I know, it works on almost any car, Hondas, Acuras, Toyotas, Nissans and <laughs> everything else. There are some things that they could fix here and there, like when I'm looking through the different brands, it should be alphabetized. I couldn't find any actuation tests where I could turn on my headlights or turn on my windshield wipers or close and open my windows or lock my doors. It's probably buried somewhere in here, but I couldn't figure it out. So I wouldn't say it's super user-friendly. It does have a nice looking user interface. I was a little disappointed to find out that this can't make new keys. I did review this OBD2 scanner not too long ago, but the issue with this is it only works for Hondas. So if you wanted to work on Toyotas, you gotta pay an annual subscription for that. And let's say you later get a Ford or something, you'd have to buy another subscription for that. But with this, there's no subscription fee. It works for any car. However, this one can make keys. I was able to do the actuation tests. This one can't make keys. I couldn't find how to do the actuation test. So pretty much boils down to what do you need in an OBD2 scanner. If you want something that's pretty fast and durable and gives you live data, even graphs, this is a good tool. It works on any car. But if you want more advanced features like programming keys or wanting to hook up a camera to it, or maybe you want Bluetooth functionality where you don't need this wire, those are just a bunch of fancy features that you don't need unless you've been doing this a long time and that's just your preference. That's where the higher price products come in. So yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm looking forward to using it because I just like having a nice iPad type scanner and just, you know, being able to navigate through it quickly. Keep in mind that you're gonna need Wi-Fi, you need internet. So this isn't something that you could just carry with you and you wanna check a code real fast. I mean, you can, but it might take a little bit longer. You might need a hotspot to your phone, but yeah. That's the X-Tool D5S. You guys wanna learn more about the product, check the Amazon link down in the description below. And if you're thinking about buying the product, feel free to use my link, it helps me out. But all right guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you on the next one. Yeah!